the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Last week, Phil and Alice almost had RCA as the sponsor for their radio show. But due to Julius' interference and Frankie's mismanagement, they lost the sponsor and unwittingly signed to appear at a burlesque house. (laughs) Alice's brother, William, has just heard the news and is terribly upset. Oh, my poor sister. (laughs) Signing to do a bubble dance under the name of Boo Boo (laughs) Fay. Alice, this is the biggest scandal that's befallen the Fay family since you married Philip. (laughs) Took us nine years to live that down, and now this. What do you mean, scandal? I'm the best thing that's happened to the Fay family since Alexander's ragtime band. (laughs) Marrying you ruined her career. If it wasn't for you, she'd still be in pictures. I don't want to be in pictures. But, sis, I could have gotten you the lead in Sunset Boulevard instead of Gloria Swanson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. They tell me it was a toss-up between Alice and Clara Bow. <laughs> oh, I think Alice would have gotten it in preference to Clara. Well, I don't know. She said that uh, All Clara All right, was... boys, break it up. Break it up. <laughs> What are you, a couple of wise guys or something? (laughs) Look, Willie, Alice ain't going into burlesque. Do you think I'd let my wife appear as a bubble dancer? What manner of man you think I am? I got her another job. She's doing a one-nighter at Joe's Cellar Club. (laughs) And that reminds me, the boys in the band are waiting to rehearse your number, honey, so let's get on to the rehearsal hall, huh? Gosh, Phil, I'm afraid to go into rehearsal. If the boys in the band found out about my signing a burlesque contract, I'd die a thousand deaths. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. How would they know? Nobody knows about it except you and me and Frankie. And Frankie's the soul of discretion. (laughs) Look, honey, all you got to do is act natural. They'll never know. Just give the boys a big hello. They'll never tumble. Come on. All right, fellas. All right, you can break it up now. Slow it down a little bit. Let's get this thing started, huh? Good morning, fellas. Hi, Hi, (laughs) Boo-Boo. Oh, Phil, they found out. What'll I do? Don't stand there. Blow up your bubbles and let's get started. (laughs) (laughs) Now, just a minute, you guys. Who do you think you're talking to? The blonde bombshell. (laughs) Got your number all rehearsed, boo-boo. What number? Hit it, fellas. (laughs) Cut! (laughs) Cut that out, you guys! This is embarrassing. They found out about me. Frankie, did you tell them? Oh, perish the thought, boo. (laughs) Don't get so familiar. Use her full name, (laughs) boo-boo. Frankie, there's a limit to what I'm going to take from you. Now, let me handle this, honey. Remley, who told them to play that tune? I did. (laughs) You did. Look, I'm in charge here, and I won't tolerate such insuburbanation. (laughs) Don't forget, I'm the leader. Correction, you were the leader. You've been replaced. And may I ask who replaced me? I'm not in a position to say, but from now on, our theme song opens with a rippling guitar. Left-handed. Frankie, you 
would do a thing like that to Phil after all the things he's done for you? Well, it wasn't my fault, Alice. It was a choice between me and Curly, and the boys voted me in. <laughs> However, I will say this for you, Curly, the vote was very close. <laughs> 29 to 1 <laughs> Well, at least I got one vote Somebody was loyal to me Who is he? I'd like to shake his hand You're too late He's no longer with us <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to see you go, Curly But Frankie, Pick I'm... Pick up your drum And I'll give you a letter To Guy Lombardo <laughs> Not till I get to the bottom of this Why don't they want me? Because you haven't got a sponsor There's nothing as humiliating As working for a guy who ain't working <laughs> <laughs> Now wait a minute Let me talk to these guys, huh? <laughs> Fellas Why don't you want me As your leader anymore? Because you're an old man <laughs> <laughs> You've had your day as a leader, Pop Now step aside And make room for the newcomers What newcomers? Kids like Isham Jones, Paul Waitman. Yeah. <laughs> and Vincent Lopez, and John Philip Sousa, and Rose. All right, I don't want no more of <laughs> Look, Artie, one more crack out of you, and I'll paste your curls on again and ship you back to Phil Spitalny. <laughs> now, look, you guys, I'm still in charge. Now, get up there and play for Alice's tune, and I want it to sound good, so don't get too close to your instruments. <laughs> I don't care if the sun don't shine I get my loving in the evening time When I'm with my baby It's no fun with the sun around But I get going when the sun goes down And I meet my baby That's when we kiss and kiss and kiss And then we kiss some more don't ask how many times we kiss At a time like this Do keep score So I don't care if the sun don't shine I'll get my loving in the evening time When I'm with my baby Don't shine I get my loving In the evening time When I'm With my baby It's no fun With the sun around But I get going When the sun goes down And I Meet my baby That's when we kiss And kiss and kiss And then we kiss some more Don't ask how many times We kiss like this, who keeps score? So I don't care if the sun don't shine, I'll get my loving in the evening time when, when I'm, I'm with my baby. Ah, oh, that was wonderful, Alice. That'll be a great tune for your opening number. From that, you can go right into your bubble dance, and then... Frankie, will you forget it? I have no intention of appearing in a burlesque show. Even if I wanted to, I wouldn't know how to act. I've never even been to a burlesque. What did they do there anyway, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, how would I know? <laughs> I, too, have led a sheltered life <laughs> Hey, Frankie, you've been around a little Have you ever been to a burlesque show? Heavens to Minsky, no <laughs> However, if you're interested, Alice I believe there is a beginner's manual on the subject Called Fun on the Runway <laughs> By Professor Stripling <laughs> But you've got a contract with my friend Milligan If you don't appear in his girly show, he's going to be sore Forget about Milligan and his contract What we have to do is to concentrate on getting a radio sponsor Oh, if that's what's bothering you, Curly I got one all set for you Keep your sponsors, keep them hmm? <laughs> Last week you had a bookie service, a counterfeit well, ring Well, that was last week <laughs> This time I got a guy who's sort of in the furniture business 
Now, what do you mean, sort of? <laughs> what does he make? Electric chairs. <laughs> Fine product. <laughs> no home should be without an electric chair. <laughs> he makes them in sectional pieces. He puts two of them together and sells them as hot love seats. <laughs> He'd make a swell spot. Wait a minute, will you? Forget about them. Hot love seats. <laughs> I don't understand Hey Hmm? I got an idea Yeah? Yeah, Mr. Phillips of RCA Was gonna sign us up last week Until Julius messed it up By telling Phillips I was a no-good loafer So? So, if we can get the kid To go down and see Phillips And confess he was lying Everything's gonna be okay Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go get little camel face And take him down well, let's... <laughs> Hey, Alice, honey Can't you realize Our troubles are over? As soon as we get this Straightened out with Phillips We'll be back on the air again then we won't have to worry about Milligan and his burlesque show Or anything else Our troubles are going to be over Hello, hello, Don't... hello, hello, hi there, hello there uh, Mr. Milligan uh, Hello, boo-boo, and how's my star? The star of Milligan's Meaty Mamas <laughs> <laughs> Meaty Mamas? That's not you, honey That's the chorus of three in the back of you Three chorus girls? Yeah these dames are so fat you can only get three I'm on the stage at one time <laughs> Mr. Milligan, this has gone far enough I have no intentions of going... Now, will you see a costume, honey? It's a dazzling thing of you <laughs> Rhinestones and sequins, no less Even fringes <laughs> Yeah, it sounds pretty It is, it is I got it right here with me Want to see it? Oh, you brought it with you? Uh, let's see I got it right in my wallet here someplace <laughs> 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 oh, no, that's a stamp That's a stamp, yeah Wait a minute What's the matter with you, Milligan? Do you think I'd let my wife appear in a costume like that? Well, all right, all right We'll cut it down a little Wait a minute <laughs> Milligan, this whole thing is ridiculous My wife is not going to appear in your burlesque show Boo-boo, please Tell your stooge to keep out of it all right, honey, I've got a great publicity campaign underway for you. We've got billboards all over town. Now take those billboards down. All right, all right. We don't need them anyway. We're getting enough publicity from the skywriting. You mean you're writing my name in the sky? Oh, all over it. Got to run along now. Got to take my chorus line down to the Department of Agriculture. What for? Their prime beef stamps are wearing off. <laughs> well, so long. And remember, burlesque is better than ever. <laughs> Poor Milligan. He's always at a loss for words. <laughs> Talking to him is like carrying on a conversation with a pneumatic drill. <laughs> well, come on, let's not waste any more time. Alice, Frankie and me will go get Julius and we'll meet you at Mr. Phillips' office. <laughs> Well, Remley, we're in the market. Now let's go in and ask Julius to come down with us. Oh, huh? wait a minute, Curly. You know that ornery little kid ain't gonna go with us willingly. We'll have to force him into going to Phillips with us. Yeah, you're... Uh... Hey, look, I got it. Hmm? Let's stand at the vegetable counter and pretend we're buying something, and then when he comes to wait on us, we'll grab him, throw him in the car, and off we go! <laughs> Don't they have a wonderful display of vegetables here? Mmm, mmm These look uh, especially delectable Get your clammy mitts off of me, Ruta Beggin <laughs> <laughs> We're just shopping, we were gonna buy some Well, just look at them, don't finger them I just contaminated the whole stand <laughs> Hey, Gus, bring the spray gun our rutabagas have been felt by the untouchables Lovely child 
Yeah. yeah. He has all the charm of a sucked lemon. <laughs> Now look, Julius, we want two pounds of this stuff. Wrap it up and carry it out to the car for us. How do you like that? They come in here shoplifting and they want me to carry their loot. <laughs> I'm not shoplifting. I'm going to pay for it. What, what? You ain't waking. Haven't made a dime in four months. I've got a charge account here. I cut you off. As soon as you get a sponsor, we'll reopen negotiations. Oh, uh, Yeah. I'll get a sponsor, and if I can't get a sponsor on radio, I can always get a job on television. Are you kidding, Mac? <laughs> You're too old for television. What do you mean, too old? With all them lines in your face, you look like 15 minutes of bad reception. <laughs> time with you guys. You want to buy something or don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to buy something. I'd like to purchase this burlap sack. Okay. What are you going to put in it? You grab him, Frankie, and take him to the car. Let go of me, eh? Grab him now. Frankie's making an awful racket. What should we do? Start singing, Curly. That'll drown out anything. <laughs> Possibilities, possibilities We're living in a world that's full of possibilities Ain't no miracle too impossible To anyone that sees the possibilities If you recall your history Then you will find that all our famous men Turned out to be the kind of men Who never stopped to look behind they looked ahead to see what they could see And they saw possibilities, possibilities They never overlooked a single possibility Proven naturally, opportunity Is for the one who sees the possibilities Each time you try to solve a new phenomenon The skeptics say it's just a dream, I know But after you're a hero and the job is done then you can tell them all, I told you so Yes, there are possibilities, possibilities If you will only make the most of your facilities Folks will idolize, even eulogize The little guy who sees the possibilities When Christopher Columbus proved the world was round He met Queen Isabel when he returned She said, now tell me, Chris, about this place you found he said, well, Bell, as far as I'm concerned, it sure got possibilities, possibilities. I tell you, Queen, I've never seen such possibilities. And I really feel we should make a deal before somebody sees the possibilities. When little Abe was growing up in Illinois, to be a big success was his intent. He studied so much harder than the other boys. Till one day he became their president He saw the possibilities Possibilities He always tried to make the most of his facilities Proven naturally Opportunity is for the one who sees the possibilities I guess by now There ain't no doubt About the point I'm bringing out So if you'll open up your eyes You are bound to recognize the Possibilities, possibilities We're living in a world that's full of possibilities Ain't no miracle too impossible To anyone who sees the possibilities Well, here we are, Remley. Let's carry Julius to Mr. Phillips' office. Huh? Okay. I'll let him out of the trunk rack. Hey, you know something? Hmm? I ain't heard a word out of that kid for ten minutes. I better see if he's all right. Hey, Julius! Hey! Hey, Julius, you all right in there? Let me out of here! Uh, uh. <laughs> such a racket. <laughs> hey, Curly, give me the key and I'll let him out. Okay. Uh, uh. Remley. What? I lost the key. 
<laughs> oh, you're just saying that. <laughs> That exhaust off. <laughs> what are we gonna? No, I'm on the level. I'm already. I've blown the key somewhere. Well, look. Let's don't worry about it. If we can't bring Julius up to Phillips, we'll bring Phillips down to Julius. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you know all this trouble just to get a sponsor, and you got one. What have you got? A guy like we had last year, Scotty, who did nothing but get in my hair. All right, Frank. Wait a minute. Now. Hmm? Just hold it quiet. What's wrong with Scott? He hated me. <laughs> he told people I was an unmitigated crook, a notorious embezzler, and a gibbering idiot. So he happened to be a good judge of human nature. <laughs> Let's hurry and get this over with, will you? I've had enough trouble for one hey, day. Hey, buddy, would you like to buy... Well, well, if it ain't my old pal Frankie. Oh, hello, Grogan. <laughs> hey, Curly, you remember my friend Grogan? You met him last week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The counterfeiter who wanted to sponsor me. How are you, 880? <laughs> How are your $3 bills going this week? That thing's are at a standstill. I'm having a little trouble with the government. They're trying to stop me because they found out I'm making money. <laughs> uh, look, Grogan... They're persecuting me because I'm underselling them. <laughs> the sawheads... <laughs> hey, Grog, look, the government's the only one allowed to make money Yeah, that's just it, they got a monopoly <laughs> It's un-American True, but there's nothing you can do about it <laughs> That's what you think <laughs> The government stopped me from making money, so I stopped them How can you stop them? I got an injunction against them. <laughs> Till the case is settled, the government can't print another bill. Alice ain't gonna like this. <laughs> of course, uh, I ain't worried. I got something else going for me in the meantime. I have become a writer. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear that you're in a legitimate profession. What kind of writing? I got a check forging service. <laughs> if you guys are still interested in signing with a sponsor, you know I can help you. Who can you get us? Anybody you want. Just name a sponsor and I'll forge his name to the contract. <laughs> Okay, never mind that, Grogan. With my talent, I can get a job on the air without forging a... You know how to spell Phillips? <laughs> I might have a little trouble with this guy at that. Well, now, look, if you expect trouble, maybe, maybe I'd better go in with you. I will get your contract signed for you with this little uh, <clears throat> fountain pen. <laughs> Gee, isn't that a cute little pen? Look, Curly, it's got a trigger Put on it. Put that gun away. <laughs> Thanks very much, Grogan, but we don't need your help. Come on, Remley, will you please? I like that, Harris. He's my kind of guy. <laughs> I'm gonna help him whether he wants it or not. I'll just tag along after him. <laughs> hey, Curly. Where do we find Phillips' office? It's right down the hall here. Now, when we get in there, Remley, don't do no oh, talking. Phil, Let me do. where have you been? I have wonderful news. I've just been in the office, and RCA still wants us. All we have to do is sign the contract. Oh, honey, that's wonderful. Let's go in and sign with Mr. Phillips. Oh, by the way, dear, Mr. Phillips isn't here anymore. There's a new man in charge, and guess who it is? I don't care who it is, as long as he pays the money every week. Let me in his office. How do you do, sir? Hello, Harris. Scotty! <laughs> Frankie, isn't this wonderful? Our new sponsor is Mr. Scott. I think I'll kill myself. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Scott, it's going to be swell working for you once more, and I know you're just thrilled to have me and Frankie with you again. Yes. <laughs> hey, Scotty, how come you're not with Rexall anymore? They let me go. Some malicious individual wrote a letter to the board of directors blackening my character. 
The letter said I was an unmitigated crook, a notorious embezzler, a gibbering <laughs> idiot, and a wife beater. Oh, I, it must have been written by some strange crank. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds more to me like it was written by somebody who knew him. What was that? Oh, no, he means it looks like it was an inside job, Mr. Scott. Otherwise, how would they know you beat your wife? <laughs> I don't beat my wife. I don't. I don't. I don't. All right, you don't. I just took a wild stab at that one anyway. <laughs> Grimly. So you're the one. I ought to take you in out of... Now, take it easy, Scotty. Well, I ought to... Frankie. Frankie I... was only kidding. I... Look, Mr. Scott, please now Remley's always playing harmless little jokes and pranks like that He's just a mischievous imp <laughs> So was Jack the Ripper <laughs> Oh, well, the company wants you people signed up, so I guess I'll have to do it Sign here, Harris, and I'll sign And Mr. Scott, I assure you, Phil and Frankie won't do anything to embarrass you Or my name ain't Boo Boo Fay. I mean Alice Faye <laughs> Boo Boo? What does that mean? Oh, nothing, nothing at all it Don't mean a thing No, that's just a name she uses in burlesque <laughs> She signed a contract last Thank you Miss Faye, did you Did you sign a burlesque contract? Oh, Mr. Scott, yes, but you see, I, I, I You can't I, do this to me I've just signed you to do a radio show And now you tell me you're in burlesque Oh, what did I do to deserve these characters? Every time I get a good job, they come along and louse it up. Scotty, Alice had no intention of going you in You keep the... out of this. I'm not going to let you do this to me. I am not going to sign this contract. You're not going to do what, fatso? <laughs> I said I am not going... Watch this. <laughs> this is my gun mall. <laughs> Look, Rock, I told you that we don't need you. Quiet, Harris. This is between me and Blubber Puss. <laughs> Pick up that pen and sign the contract. I will not. I'll give you an alternative. <laughs> Either you use your Parker 51 or I use my Colt 45. <laughs> like a sporting choice to me. Put that gun down. I don't have to get a sponsor at the point of a gun. I got lots of sponsors after me. Like who? Well, there's, uh, there, well, there's also, keep him covered, Grogan. <laughs> we can't force Mr. Scott to sign us. Keep on of this, Blondie. Now sign, that's all. All right, Harris, you've got me with this road company Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> Here's your signed contract. I like your cooperative attitude. Mr. Scott, now that it's all set, we're back on the air for RCA. Very well. We'll sponsor you. But if you dare to mention our good name on your show, even once, <laughs> we'll sue you for everything you've got. Well, you mean we'll have a sponsored show, but we won't be allowed to do any commercials? Oh, that isn't cricket. Yeah. <laughs> Frankie, hmm? do you think... People will listen to a program without commercials? Let's try it for a while and see. It's liable to start a fad. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It might even bring back radio. <laughs> Folks, Los Angeles starts rolling tonight. The Legion is here. And we want to add our welcome as this city greets the great 32nd Annual National Convention of the American Legion. A big hello to National Commander George N. Craig and Mrs. Craig, Elmer Sherwood. Coming up, Tales of the Texas Rangers, then Theater Guild on NBC.